think tanks that are out there and they're controlling the regulations, their argument is always, we need less regulations for more jobs. It's about jobs and it's about freedom. I talk about this in my book, The Crash of 2016. Back in 1971, Lewis Powell wrote a memo to uh, his friend, the, the head of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, uh, pointing out that as a result of Ralph Nader's book, Unsafe at Any Speed, and Rachel Carlson's book, Silent Spring, which had both come out a few years earlier, consumer movements and environmental movements were arising that were threatening uh, corporate profits and, frankly, corporate power. And he said, you know, we corporations who have by and large been apolitical for centuries need to rise up and get involved in politics. We need to be influencing public opinion. We need to take over the universities. We need to take over the judiciary. We need to take over Congress. We need to create think tanks that will control public opinion. And those think tanks all, by and large, came out of that out of that Powell memo in 71. They, most of them emerged in the 70s and 80s, well funded by large corporations or by billionaires who got their money from large corporations. And their main message is, don't do anything that's going to hurt the profits of the billionaires. Now, the, they don't say it that way. They say, oh, you know, regulation is hurting and killing jobs, which is nonsense. For example, if you've got a power plant that's belching stuff into the air and a regulation comes along and says, you know, you've got to cut your particulate belching by 10 percent, somebody's got to design a scrubber, somebody's got to build the scrubber, somebody's got to you know, manufacture it, somebody's got to install it. That creates jobs. Regulations, by and large, actually create jobs. What about their argument about the freedom? They're trying to wrap it into individualism, the, the, the right. feelings all Americans have about pulling up bootstraps, right. John Wayne, be free, yeah. no regulations. Yeah. One of the most destructive memes or thought viruses that's promoted by these think tanks and, and, and the billionaires that run them is that uh, we are free with less government and, and we are free without oversight or regulation. Well, the fact of the matter is the billionaires are free with less government. They can afford their own health care. They don't get exposed to toxic chemicals. They don't live in Cancer Alley. They can fly anywhere in the world. They can buy a mansion in, in the mountains of Spain if they want. You know. And they know that freedom is a word that has a lot of resonance with Americans. It's, it, it harkens all the way back to the American Revolution. So they have been surprisingly successful at selling the idea that somehow if we can kill off government, then we'll all be more free. It's a lie. It's, a, it's an absolute lie. The billionaires might be more free, but the vast majority, the 99.99% .99 of Americans, will not be more free, and they won't be more safe, and they won't be more healthy. They will be less free, less safe, less healthy, and frankly, less uh, economically viable and secure. I'm glad to report all beaches and waters are open for everyone to enjoy. It seems like the truth doesn't matter anymore. Like, what has happened to the truth? What has happened to the truth is a hell of a good question. What has happened to the truth is that it has been sacrificed on the altar of profit. We saw this first back in the 30s and 40s and 50s with asbestos. Basically covered it up, denied it, said, no, oh, we don't know, we, you know, we're not sure. And now we've got all these people dying from it. My father died from that. That was followed then by tobacco. They knew that their product killed people. But they bought scientists who were, well, arguably not scientists because they were willing to just manufacture nonsense. Do you believe nicotine is not addictive? I believe nicotine is not addictive, yes. Mr. Johnston. Uh, Congressman, cigarettes and nicotine clearly do not meet the classic definitions of addiction. What they're marketing, what they're, what they're selling is doubt. You know, is, well, maybe the science is this, maybe it's that. And now we see it with global climate change. We've seen it with the problems in the Gulf. We've seen it with a whole variety of things where these uh, phony scientists or just, you know, lobbyists and think tanks and press releases are out there saying, well, you know, that science is not certain. Uh, and it's, it, we're not really sure the world is warming up. We're really not sure that that dispersant is, is toxic. We're really not sure that, you know, fracking is going to cause earthquakes or, uh, you know, pump ozone into the air or ruin communities. Uh, we're just not really sure. And therefore, we shouldn't do anything about it.